Good morning. Happy Friday. Make sure everything is working appropriately. Okay. Good morning. Morning, morning. Happy Friday. Happy St. Patrick's Day. We'll get started in just a moment. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, Sunnyvale. Happy Friday. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, for those who are celebrating, you know, everyone is a little Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, welcome to my weekly virtual office hours. Uh, this week's early artwork is a mural from Vargas Elementary. Uh, it's, uh, of course, Vargas is Vargas Dolphins. And so uh, definitely uh, lots of good dolphin items around the school, but they have a really nice mural, uh, undersea mural that, that I really like um, visiting when I get a chance, uh, but it's uh, always good to see art uh, around our city and especially at you know um, one of our elementaries. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning, I'm Sunnyvale Mayor Larry Klein. Thank you for joining me again this week. Um, you know, and we have a, a slight break from the rain and the atmospheric river that we've had for the last few days and weeks. Um, this is the 156th installment of my weekly virtual office hours. You know, hope everyone is doing well, staying healthy, uh, staying dry where you can. You know, we've now reached 1,096 days since the March 16, 2020 County Health Order started the shelter in place in an attempt to slow the spread of COVID-19. You know, almost exactly three years ago, I converted my weekly coffee shop office hours into these weekly live stream addresses. And, you know, I have, except for a week of surgery, I haven't missed a week since. You know, thanks for everyone who has joined me over the last three years. You know, people still say they enjoy hearing from their mayor each week, uh, whether or not they're watching live or watching this video delayed. You know, these weekly addresses allow me to reach a lot more people than my in-person office hours at being seen on Murphy Avenue. Um, but, you know, it's been an interesting three years to say the least, you know, um, and it's been good, you know, these, these sessions allow me to reach a lot more people, you know, answer your questions, give you some words of encouragement, especially early on, you know, three years ago uh, when the shelter in place started, uh, which also happened to be St. Patrick's Day. Um, it was, you know, a way to kind of bring the community together through uh, through these live stream addresses. So, you know, thank you for allowing me to continue to represent you and work for Sunnyvale. Uh, you know, we're we're now starting to look at, um, you know, what what this will look like going forward. You know, three years in, um, it's been a lot of fun. You know, it's been and it's been good. You know, being let's say the same voice at times in, in the storm of noise, especially early on in COVID. You know, we've had, we had lots of people watching it at a certain time. Uh, you know, early on there were um, up to a hundred at times watching because people were at home and had nothing better to do than watch their mayor uh, in this live stream address. But, but it's been, it was good, you know, to, to basically keep track and helped me kind of um, 
organize my thoughts, organize what's happened over over the last three years. You know, it's not been easy for everyone, for anyone. And, you know, everyone's went through their own challenges and, and that it was especially difficult being separated, being, you know, stuck at home and not being able to socialize, not being able to interact with your family, with your friends, like you had been used to for so many years. So, so we're back to whatever the new normal happens to be, you know, and so for, for me, um, we'll start, you know, sometime where the next month I'll start not doing this every week, you know, uh, maybe once or twice, once or twice a month to kind of catch up on what the big items are on the, um, during the month and conceivably, you know, change this a little bit, conceivably bring in, you know, some other people to speak with me. Um, but, um, can, you know, conceivably turn this into more of a round table, but, but, you know, for me, it's been good. Um, it's been an interesting three years, and it's been good to reach a lot more people than, than you know, the mayor normally gets to talk to in a week. So, so thank you as always uh, for what you've done in our community, and and thank you for joining me. You know, um, in my you know in my home office almost every week. Uh, you know, let me change my background. You know, it's been um, it's been an interesting kind of um, change from that standpoint to to communicate to to have you know to have these sessions on a weekly basis to where I get to reach out to the residents and and throughout the week you know hearing back from them you know raising having them either raise additional questions or just thank me for for you know uh, being their mayor and and answering you know helping them solve whatever their problem is or or get more involved so so thank you for everyone who's asked questions who's who's commented on my posts and uh, just been been there to you know hear from their mayor and uh, give the city suggestions on how it can be can, how it can improve so so thank you for that and uh, we'll see where the next you know the next few months ago as we as we continued kind of doing this post covid world uh but definitely uh the con in, in especially from the con content of covid and and the covid tracking numbers um it's less emphasis is put on that from the county from the state from the federal standpoint and so you know that will be slowly taken out of these weekly sessions so let's go ahead and uh, talk about what's happened at the federal state county and city level over the last two weeks, uh, last Tuesday, Governor Newsom's office announced that this year, Newsom plans to fulfill his constitutional requirement for state of the state by just sending a letter to the, uh, the legislature. So very different, you know, you know, almost every governor does the, the state of the state address, much like the president's state of the union, um, that yearly speech. And so um, the California constitution requires the governor to do that report. Uh, every year, and so this time it's just a letter to the the um, legislature. And this week, the governor has started his four day tour of um, the state. So starting in Sacramento, he was in the Bay Area yesterday. He'll be in LA, I think, tomorrow, in San Diego on Sunday. So basically, laying out his highest priorities. You know, his latest um, announcement was converting the conversion of San Quentin into educational and let's say workforce for more transitional uh, prison. Uh, so, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Uh, there was an announcement yesterday about um, housing and having the National Guard um, start building tiny homes. So we'll see, you know, what where these where these actions go and what happens going forward. And then last Wednesday morning, you know, I joined um, many people, you know, especially some students, some parents, some other electeds at Summit Denali High School, you know, uh, earlier this year, Summit uh, Public Schools, and it's a charter school that's been in our community um, for multiple years now, announced that it was closing the Summit Denali Middle and High School um, at the end of this school year. And, you know, it's really, that decision really left a lot of students and a lot of parents you know, traumatized and really uncertain about the next school year. That frustration really has built up. And so it was good to kind of show, highlight, you know, that there needs to be more oversight of what charter schools are doing, you know, for them to make that physical or that that decision um, somewhat haphazardly. 
uh, without appropriate, you know, it'd been different if they had announced, you know, in January that at the end of 2024 school year, so next June, um, they they were going to be closing the schools. And that would have given the parents plenty of time to look at other options and figure out what they're going to do for the next school year. And then, you know, a plan appropriately. Some of the deadlines for some of the private schools had already passed for, for the September, August, September school year. So uh, lots of parents are, you know, trying to deal with, with some of those issues. You know, uh, N NBC, CBS, um, the Mercury News, so several papers were there, but, but it's more at this point um, a foregone conclusion that that's what Summit Denali is going to be doing. And so, you know, my, my heart goes out to those parents, um, to those students. It's not an easy, you know, trying to figure out where those friendships that are built during during you know middle school and high school and and all of a sudden those kids are those those students are being dispersed to multiple schools in the area so uh, good luck with that you know it's it's not you know and there's nothing the city can do and and currently there's not enough state oversight of what charter schools can do so so hopefully you know talking to um, our state assembly members and and senators um, something can get done. Uh, last Wednesday was the official Holy Holiday, uh, so you know, um, so happy Holy to to all those celebrating the Festival of Colors. You know, it's it's usually um, and you've probably seen on my social media uh, lots of brightly covered uh, colored chalk uh, events over the last week or two. You know, and it, and it represents the triumph of good over evil or knowledge over ignorance. And you know, so um, last Tuesday. I was um, at uh, Ponderosa Park for an event. Uh, I was at Ortega Park on Sunday for an event. And then, you know, lots of um, Bay Area events um, with the, with the um, community. And so happy to be out there and celebrating the, tr the, the, the diversity of our community and, and, you know, the diversity of Sunnyvale and, and celebrating those traditions with lots of people from around the world. It's, it's a lot, it's, it's, it's one of the, one of the fun things of, as far as being mayor. Uh, last Wednesday, of course, was International Women's Day. And in the evening, I visited Na Maker Nexus for their Women's Day event. Uh, and thanks, you know, and I really want to thank Maker Nexus for for bringing people together. It's it's people of all ages getting hands on experience with woodworking, with welding, with painting, uh, and it was good to highlight the women in our community, the 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 young women who were there to to uh, get hands on you know training, and then just having some panels and having some people talking. Uh, great event, and thank you for being part of our community. Uh, last Thursday, I was in Cupertino to honor one of Sunnyvale schools. So, you know, the Cup Cupertino Union High School District um, had 15 different schools that were honored as California Distinguished Schools for for this year, for 2023, and one of one of which was in Sunnyvale. So, West Valley Elementary, and that's our <clears throat> most west uh, elementary uh, in this in the in the uh, city. Um, was was awarded the California Distinguished School Award from um, and then from the state and I uh, met uh, Principal Lynn and was happy to uh, meet with her to accept you know um, accept the award and and give her a proclamation so great to see one of our schools and you know we we love all of our schools but it's great to see when they're getting you know state level recognition um, last Saturday was of course a busy day you know. First, our Sunnyvale EV ride and drive event was actually canceled because of potential rain. It's supposed to be raining all day or most of the day. So uh, staff is currently looking to reschedule that event. So as soon as that event is set, I'll be uh, bringing back the new date. Um, but at midday, I was at uh, the grand opening of California Momo Kitchen. So uh, <clears throat> it's a new Nepalese Indian restaurant. Uh, they had their grand opening um, last Saturday, but they've been open for a few weeks now. It's located at 913 East Duane, um, right near DeGuine. So uh, a little bit farther, you know, just between Fair Oaks and, and uh, Lawrence Expressway, uh, you can find them. And it was great to see so many people out there. Uh, just amazing to, to, so, you know, residents, uh, friends, family, 
you know, we had 40 or 50 people there for their big buffet, the big opening. So uh, happy to see yet another restaurant uh, come, into, come to Sunnyvale. And then later on Saturday, I was in San Jose to celebrate Holy. Uh, there were thousands of people at Discovery Meadows um, throwing chalk around, dancing, uh, lots of, you know, it was a very festive event. And so happy, happy to be there and celebrating along with so many people, so many elected, so many of our Indian uh, community. Um, and then as far as this week, you know, Tuesday was a crazy day. It, um, that ap atmospheric uh, river uh, was all wind, you know, and uh, definitely those winds were amazing. You know, Sunnyvale, the whole Bay Area was hit by rain for the previous few days and then some really strong winds some record breaking winds hit on Tuesday so lots of trees were blown down um, all over the city mainly because the ground was so saturated um, you know normal we had you know, the normal branches come down and things of that nature but but this was more than I had ever seen and and public works is still recovering for um, um, trying to uh, remove certain trees. Uh, you know, we still, as far as that recovery, we still have about 13,000 people in the Bay Area this morning. They're still without power. So, you know, definitely not easy times for, for a lot of people. And, and you know, luckily, I, I didn't hear of anyone that was actually injured. Uh, lots of, you know, car damage and, you know, um, power lines down and all that, but but in general, uh, we we weathered that storm without too much problem. Uh, and then Tuesday evening <clears throat> was our last uh, council meeting in the old city hall. So you know it was it was great uh, to be on the dais for a final time. I've been you know I was on the planning commission starting in two thousand and four. So I spent a lot of time in those city hall chambers, uh, a lot of time on that dais uh, for the last almost 20 years now. Uh, but but it's actually, um, it was good to say goodbye and looking forward to our first meetings um, sometime in the next few months at, at our new city hall and more on that later. But we started the evening with a study session um, to update our housing element after getting feedback from um, the state at the end of um, last year. So we're, we're updating our housing element to meet those requirements. Uh, we had several declarations, several uh, special orders of the day, one of which was for Women's History Month. And Margaret Lawson from the Sunnyvale Historical Society and Heritage Park Museum came to speak. Uh, it was great to hear from Margaret and talk about, you know, um, her fights uh, for, for reproductive uh, health for, for women back in the 70s and 60s and 70s. And it was great to hear, you know, some of her stories about past council members. So uh, happy to, you know, happy to celebrate Women's History Month. And then we also celebrated American Red Cross Month. So Dr. Liz Dietz uh, with the American Red Cross Silicon Valley chapter came and spoke about all that their organization does, especially during COVID. And, you know, it's not just about, um, you know, uh, basically blood drives and all that, but Red Cross is there. You know, they were there in a big way a few years ago when when uh, we had a fire at one of the apartment buildings that that emptied out one of that, that apartment building quite a bit. So, you know, happy to hear all that Red Cross does and happy to to declare March as Red Cross, um, Red, American Red Cross month. So um, next, um, as far as the main meeting, uh, we looked at uh, community benefits for one of our Peary Park developments. So, you know, as we're uh, one of the things that when we approved the Peary Park specific plan a few years ago, we made sure that community benefits were part of that plan. And so um, one of the one of the developments was supposed to have retail space and kind of in the post COVID world um, and especially what what that um, development was looking to do. Uh, they're looking at to making it a private cafeteria as opposed to a uh, open like open restaurant or something of that nature just from a location standpoint uh, but that's you know so it's a trade-off in community benefits so it was basically paying into a fund for new additional community benefits in in Peary Park but the good thing of course is that building 
will become Synopsys's new headquarters. So they're moving their headquarters from Mountain View uh, into Sunnyvale, where they already had several engineering building so they already they were already part of our community but but happy to hear that they're actually going to be moving uh their headquarters from mountain view to sunnyvale after they finish the the um, additions or the changes into the building but um it was good to to you know approve that and see you know um have them move forward uh, with with becoming another member of our business community and then uh we also appointed our new representatives for several of our boards and commissions and we take applications year round as far as our boards and commissions are concerned but uh ultimately you know every quarter we go through an interview process to replace any you know people that have left um because of they of they they're moving or they got too busy or whatever um whatever reason they resigned for um and then <clears throat> last night uh, we had a great turnout at Lakewood Elementary, and this was for our first of three Sunnyvale Unity events. And this one was uh, focused on overcoming bigotry. And so, you know, we we started these Sunnyvale Uni Unity events um, about actually uh, just about four years ago after we had a hate crime in our community. And so, uh, every year we've we've had them as you know representing um what we can do to help build a uh, community you know and, and it also promotes you know culture and belonging within Sunnyvale you know all where where we have such a diverse community it's making sure that that community feels welcome feels safe feels respected at the end of the day and so the event um was uh had an intercultural panel discussion and then we broke up into small uh, groups, but but it was actually the panel was fantastic, you know. And I just want to thank you know our partners, um, Sunnyvale School District who hosted Fremont Union High School District. Um, um, uh, let's see, uh, the office of Supervisor Otto Lee, uh, and of course, and city staff did a fantastic job. So thanks to Jackie Guzman, our deputy deputy city uh, manager, who who really organized the event. And of course, um, the Islamic Network Group, Ing, uh, which did, which figure, which helped uh, organize the different speakers that were there. So really, really happy to have that event and have so many people come out to talk about sometimes very difficult discussions on, on you know, race and, and hate and, and you know, what they've seen in our community and how we react to it. So, so thank you for everyone who attended. You know, we had all the council members there. So thank you for that. Uh, but it was good to have, you know, the school, the, the superintendents, the board members, you know, so many in our in our community that that came out to support that as far as that's concerned. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our weekly COVID numbers. And this will probably be the last time I really talk about COVID numbers, you know, especially with some questions about reporting across the nation having problems. You know, I've, I've heard the, you know, questions about whether or not, you know, the numbers are accurate. And, and definitely we, we look at, you know, a waste management and trying to figure out numbers from that standpoint. But, but the numbers with all the home testing, especially over the last year, six months and year, uh, have redu reduced the actual, you know, case numbers uh, to um, quite a bit and not not having accurate data as far as that's concerned. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of intermixing as far as death related to COVID, death because of COVID. There's lots of other things as far as that's concerned. And, and you know, and, and then some some counties, some states are not reporting. So the national numbers are not reflective of what things used to be as well so so this will probably be the last time you know i'll continue to have i might highlight you know if things change with covid um but but in general you know tracking the numbers every week isn't what people are here for you know things are are things are relatively good now and com especially compared to where we were you know a year ago two years ago but um, the numbers themselves are are kind of secondary you know we've now reached 103.8 million cases from a national standpoint uh, that's up about 130,000 cases in the last week we've had you know um over 
268 million people with at least one shot, you know, 81% of our population, you know, we still have people passing away with COVID um, related to COVID in some way. So we've had 1,121,000 uh, deaths related to COVID, another 2,000 just in the last week. And then California, we've now had 11,162,000 positive cases. Uh, we've trended downward with a daily average now of about 2,300 new cases a day, uh, which is way it was down from you know 2,600 a week ago, but we were up um, about 3,000 cases a day just a month ago. So so it's good from that standpoint. The test case positivity is around 5.7 percent, around 6 percent, and we still have people passing away with COVID. 109, 160 deaths in the last week, so we passed 100,000, and so we're now at. 100,799 deaths related to COVID. And then from a county standpoint, you know, our cumulative case count is now at 476,000 or so, up about 1,000 just in the last week. We've had an additional five deaths. So we've, we just reached uh, 2,700 deaths in the county. Uh, so 2,700 deaths related to COVID in some way. But vaccination, you know, we're one, we're one of the best um, counties of our size in the nation. You know, 95% of those 18 and over fully vaccinated, 70% of those um, that are eligible for the booster, actually more than 70% have received the booster. Um, and, you know, for, from my standpoint, we've done a fantastic job. And I want to thank the county. I want to thank County Health, the county supervisors for setting up you know, testing locations for setting up um, vaccination and booster locations around the county over the last few years. You know, when when COVID started, I was president of the Cities Association of Santa Clara County and, you know, worked to get all 15 mayors to sign a letter to basically say, please partner with us. And that partnership has really worked out. And so thank you to the county supervisors. Thank you to County Health for you know, really making a difference for in the in the health of our residents, making sure that that availability of testing, of tracing, of of getting your shot, uh, made a difference, saved people's lives. So so thank you for that. Um, let's go ahead and move to some upcoming events. So you know, today is St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so. Uh, Happy St. Patrick's Day, especially if you're Irish. Uh, multiple residents have, you know, St. Patrick's Day specials. Uh, so if you if, if you want to go to some of those restaurants, um, <clears throat> you can, you know, have a pint of Guinness. I had my pint of Guinness and and a corned beef sandwich yesterday from from the restaurants um, um, from Fibber McGee's on Murphy Avenue. But but multiple of them, Murphy's Law. Um, off the rails, you know, multiple of them are having some sort of celebration tonight and lots of li lively music on Murphy Avenue this evening. So very different than, you know, the, when, you know, when, when COVID, when the shelter in place started, you know, that first day of sheltering in place was St. Patrick's Day. And so, you know, you, at that point, you couldn't eat indoors. You couldn't even eat outdoors at restaurants. You could only do takeaway. And that started my whole Eat Sunnyvale project where, you know, I, I highlighted that, you know, you still can go downtown to Murphy Avenue and, and do takeout. And the response was so good that, you know, I started, that started the, the EatSunnyvale.com. So I've reviewed now over 230 different restaurants uh, in the city, and we've lost a few. We've lost about 15 uh, restaurants that I've reviewed over the last three years. But but in general, our restaurants have made it through, and a few of those were even rebranding. So an owner decided that they wanted to change from Mediterranean restaurant to a halal fried chicken restaurant. So some of those were were just a, an owner making a decision. But but in general, you know things have been looking good. And you know Fibber Fibber McGee's was that one of the first restaurants that I highlighted as far as, you know, the, the, uh, my mayor's restaurant project, not knowing that it was going to be a project, uh, when it started, but, but, you know, happy to highlight, you know, happy to meet the owners, the staff and, and have residents follow in the, in the mayor's footsteps over the last three years. So, so yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. I will continue that project. Um, there's a, I'll be highlighting, um, a, a restaurant that opened last week 
um, over the weekend. So uh, look forward to that. And then uh, this weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, the Friends of the Library will be having their uh, book sale. So you can go by um, the library uh, on Olive and, and take a look. Uh, there'll be the big bag, bag sale on Sunday afternoon if you want to, uh, for $5, get a great deal on you know, a bag of books. And so we'll see, you know, how that's going. I will drop by that this weekend. Um, Monday is, of course, the beginning of spring. Uh, so definitely we're st st starting to see some of the trees bud and, and you know, that the flowers starting to come up. But uh, definitely it's a little bit rainier and windier than normal, but it is the beginning of spring on Monday. And then there'll be, of course, lots of celebrations over the next few weeks um because of spring it's the beginning of of um different new year so there's a um there's now ruse um is a persian new year so i'll be celebrating that over the weekend and and you know there's um, nepalese new year and all that that are all all these events you know easter coming up passover all these events related to spring or or the beginning of spring um and then next tuesday uh, there's the first class of our um, next CERT training. And so the, that's the Community Emergency Response Team training. So that program is about an eight-week program, and that will be happening at fire station number two. Uh, but you can go online, and you know, I've hi I highlighted that earlier this week, um, that you know, it's, it's how to be better prepared for the next disaster. You know, when the next big disaster happens, it's, it's having those skills um, you know, fire safety, you know, search and rescue organization and, and disaster med medical, medical uh, training that's really critical because, you know, we won't have enough public safety. None of our cities will for a major disaster. And, it, and it'll be incumbent upon the, the our residents in the neighborhood to respond, much like they did this week. I heard from multiple residents that, you know, in a few of the trees that fell across the street, uh, the residents just pulled out a chainsaw and and you know took down some of the major limbs so that at least one of the one of the cars could go through. You know they called public public works public safety, but you know it's there were so many down trees that it was hours before um, many of them could be dealt with. So thank you for for doing that. But but the cert training is something similar for a next major disaster. So um, the training begins on the twenty first. And then goes for about eight weeks with a with a final um, graduation training on Saturday, May thirteenth. So so hopefully you can um, if you haven't went through the program, I went through it uh, multiple years ago now. But you know consider consider doing that. And then as far as upcoming council meetings, you know next Tuesday, um, March twenty first, um, you know we'll have a council meeting. However, it will not be at the new city hall. So the city hall council chambers is not ready. Um, so we're taking our show on the road. Um, the meeting will actually happen at the Washington Park Swim Center. Uh, you know, there was some equipment that's been ordered that was ordered like eight or nine months ago that we're still waiting for. So the new city hall chambers is not complete. You know, it looks beautiful indoors, but it's um, not ready for prime time as far as actually holding a meeting. Um, so we'll be at the Washington Park Swim Center. You know, at 6.45, we'll be having recognition for Santa Clara, Cal Santa Clara Valley Science and Engineering Fair Association Awards. So there are lots of Sunnyvale uh, students that, that are receiving awards for their projects, so their science projects, so happy to honor them. And then at 7 p.m., we have several special orders of the day, uh, Fair Housing Month, Arbor Day, and then Earth Month. So all these are coming up next month in April. And then as far as general business, um, we'll have one big, uh, one big thing, which is um, the selection of a preferred alignment for the Stevens Creek Trail. And so this is for the Remington to Fremont Avenue uh, um, decision. And this is one of the, you know, Sunnyvale is in charge of Remington to Fremont. Mountain View is already working on Dale Heatherstone to Remington. So that's their, you know, that's their ownership. That's their lead agency uh, portion of that trail. And we'll be making some final decisions on, on where the trail goes 
uh, going from Remington in it to Fremont. So, so happy that the Stevens Creek Trail is moving forward. Um, and then we'll be looking at um, approving our housing element um, 2022 annual progress report. And you know, getting a quick preview on that, it looks like you know, for at least for this cycle, we've met our arena numbers, not in all the not in all the um, categories, but that's but that's the big thing is we're we're doing you know fairly well for for the past eight years from our housing element standpoint, and then we'll be looking at adopting a resolution to abolish the building the board of building code appeals, uh, which has been you know hasn't really met for years except for um, having to appoint a chair or vice chair. So so something you know something that rarely happens and so we're kind of moving that responsibility and this is what we'll be discussing you know that the abolishment of that means that that responsibility will move to conceivably the planning commission and or council so that's what we'll be talking about um on tuesday night and then on april 4th we'll have our first council meeting in the new city hall however still not the city hall chambers so we'll choose as opposed to the biggest as opposed to the Washington Park Swim Center, will be at the biggest conference room at the new city hall called the Bay Conference Room. And uh, we'll have several things. We'll have special order of the day for poetry month. We'll review a change to our technology uh, surcharge fee. And then we'll provide you know, possible direction on our crossing guard program for, from public safety. So that's kind of a, uh, an overview of what's coming up from a council standpoint. Let's go ahead and get to our weekly questions. I had lots of questions this week, but if you have a question, add it to the chat and I'll try to get to it. Uh, Alan and you know several other people reached out and said, where is our electricity? You know, it's been out for two days, no heat, no light. Please help, you know, and sorry, you know, for what you've been going through. I know it's it's really frustrating, especially, you know, not having you know, you assume it's it's bad enough when you know people were during COVID complaining. It's like, oh, my internet's too not you know not fast enough. I can't do that. But to not have power, to not have you know refrigeration, and to not have heat, um, it's you know it's very difficult. And you know, I talked to our PG&E reps, you know, multiple times this week on on multiple issues, but. But, you know, and to see the, the number of people without power. So it was, you know, 43,000 yesterday. It's down to 13,000 today. But still, it's, um, you know, it's still not, not acceptable. You know, and, and I understand that they're, they're dealing with a lot. You know, they're dealing with blown over um, uh, power poles and, and dealing with, you know, uh, trees that have fallen on, on power lines. But, you know, very, very difficult time. Um, if you were affected, uh, you do get some money, you know, not a lot, but, but you know, a residential um, customer that's gone without power for 48 hours um, because of the severe storm conditions may qualify for automatic payments under PG&E's safety net program. So you can file a claim um, on property damage and miscellaneous losses, including food spoilage. So, so you need to provide an itemized list and receipts, other documentation, but, but you can get paid back for that. And then there's also um, a storm inconvenience payment. Not a lot, but there is money that you can get back from PG&E uh, as far as $25 to $100. So if your power was out for 48 to 72 hours, you get $25. 72 hours to 96 hours, $50, 96 hours to 120 hours, $75, and over 120 hours, $100. So, so there is, all that can be found on the PG&E website. Uh, you can get a little bit money back from them uh, when they haven't been providing you the power that you expect. Um, Joanna asked last week, what is the, when is the new city hall going to open? When will staff operations move in? So uh, City Hall uh, opens officially on Monday and uh, boxes have already started been, being moved into the new City Hall. So, you know, like the office of the city manager, the mayor's office, the city attorney, all that had to be packed up by Wednesday afternoon. And so all that, all those boxes are moving in. You know, most operations continued, um, some continued throughout today uh, at the City Hall. 
at the old city hall, I should say. Um, and so it's, you know, the the one stop permit center. Um, so planning office will be open until the end of the day. The utility billing cashier and call center will be closing at noon. Um, but, you know, like the city clerk and HR, they were only reachable by phone starting yesterday. So so all this, you know, Monday is the big un unboxing at the new city hall. So lots of things will be going on, but we'll be having a ribbon cutting event in early April, but the big event will actually be in the fall. So, you know, during uh, September 23rd, uh, the state of the city will have tours. By that time, we'll have finished tearing down the old city hall, the annex, the, the portable buildings, the, the uh, Sunnyville uh, business center across the street, and that'll all be open space and, and landscaped and all that. So, so looking forward to that. Um, and, and none of this really, none of this affected, you know, the library or public safety. So there, they all continue to remain open. It's just the city hall, the annex and all that. Some of those operations changed. Uh, Ron asked any grand opening festival for the new city hall. And so, yeah, so as I said before, there's a new ceremony. There'll be a small ceremony in April, uh, but the big event is scheduled in September. So uh, have, looking forward to that. Um, Elena asks, Mayor, is there a concern about losing power? If so, any recommendations on how to prepare for that? So no specific concerns. You know, it's this is the randomness of, you know, even one block, you know, in one block, one side of the street might have power and one side might not. Um, definitely, we, I've heard some, some issues in certain neighborhoods, and I'm having pg &E follow up on that to figure out some, you know, there's been a few neighborhoods that have lost power multiple times over the last few months and, and trying to figure out what's going on. But so they're, they're going to be getting back to me on that. But, but just to being prepared for power outages, having flashlights with, with, you know, fresh batteries at hand, having candles and matches, you know, a battery operated or hand cranked uh, radio is good. And of course, first aid kits. So, and then as far as you know, having enough water uh, to always, and this is a good, uh, good preparation for any emergency, having enough water, basically a gallon of drinking water uh, per day for each individual is something that everybody should be doing. So, uh, and then if your power does go out, unplug your major, um, major appliances so that when that power goes on, you're not, um, you know, basically, uh, kicking off breakers and causing, you know, a, a big flood um, in that area. Uh, Jim asked, will there be bicycle racks at the new city hall? Yes, uh, there are bicycle racks in that front, in that north plaza. I saw some, you know, bike parking signs. So they're, they're even highlighting it a little bit more than they did before. Uh, Cynthia asked, what is Nixle? So uh, it was one of my posts this week. I, you know, so you should, if you, if you're, you know, it's, it's good if you, if you want updates, local updates on emergencies that are happening in their, in their neighborhood, and that could be weather or traffic or, or some other emergency that's happening. All you need to do is text your zip code to 888-777 to opt in. And so, you know, it's like public safety announced, you know, over the last month, um, trees that are blocking you know, Matilda, or, you know, there's flooding in certain intersections. So, so it's really great from that standpoint to be prepared so that you can get, you know, automated updates um, when, whenever something happens at the local level. Uh, Robbie asked, Marie Calendars is still open. So yeah, of course, Tuesday was Pi Day, you know, 3.14, March, March 14th. And so, you know, I highlighted that Marie Calendars is still there. You know, it's actually the last Marie Calendars in the Bay Area. So uh, I'm assuming they had a very busy day for, for people coming to get their favorite, favorite pie. Um, Christina asked last week, will there be any official tours of the new building for visitors? So uh, right now, you know, especially over the next few weeks, uh, even with the ribbon cutting, uh, staff is busy unpacking, figuring out where things go in the new in their new space. So it'll be it'll be thing it'll be a while for things to get settled down. But I am talking to um, the city manager to see if we can possibly have like maybe once a month uh, tours uh, after staff is settled in. So so I'll keep you apprised as far as that's concerned. But you know it's it's. Um, 
it's really important, you know, and, and I know that there's a lot of people who want to see inside and, and, you know, starting next week, uh, you'll be able to go inside city hall, but, but I do think, you know, having a, a set tour and, and, you know, once things are a little bit more stable, uh, will be good from that standpoint. Um, I think that's all the questions. Oh, Robbie asked, where do I report down trees? Um, so for down trees in Sunnyvale before, you know, so basically 7 a.m. to 8, 4 p.m., 408-730-7506. Um, and then after 4 p.m., 408-730-7180. And that's the same number for Sunnyvale non-emergency number. Um, I think, oh, and this is, this is pertinent. Uh, Derek asked last week, hi, Larry, thank you for your posts. A city tree fell last night and crushed my car that was parked on the street. The city came by last night to clear what they could, but we'll be back to finish up today. Who do I contact in the city about this? So, so sorry to hear about your problem, you know, with, with especially what we've seen this week, limbs, trees falling on cars were, were a big thing. Um, but you can always search for claims on the city website to declare a, a claim for your damage. So hopefully we don't have too many of those, but, but it is, uh, you know, it is the, uh, one of the difficulties of, of street trees and not knowing what they're going to be doing, especially under uh, unexpected winds that we had this past week. Uh, let's see. I think that's all of my questions. Uh, let's see if anybody added a question that I can actually hopefully read. This is always the fun part of, of this. <clears throat> Let's see. Almost there. Okay. Let's see, no questions. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Hopefully everybody's wearing green. When they're out today, I don't see any other questions, or at least it's not showing up where I would like to see it. Okay, if, it, if there's another question, I'll get to it later, um, but let me go ahead and wrap up. Thank you for joining me again this week. Um, it's been an interesting three years. You know, new issues always came up, new issues still come up almost every day. But, you know, I want you all to know that no matter what challenges we face, we face them together. You know, I'm proud of Sunnyvale and how residents have always responded to our challenges. You know, it's it's being generous. It's showing their kindness. You know, you know, this this is this is what makes the city fantastic. You know, your actions and your attitude really do make a difference. You know, Sunnyvale will emerge from this as a stronger community. We're in this together and we will get through this together. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. Goodbye. <laughs>